Alright, for this tutorial I thought we'd do something a bit more fun than from the usual stuff we've been doing. And, something that's a bit more fun to me is... Sound. I love me some music. So I thought, how about we do a lesson on sound? And why should we do a lesson on sound? Well, to be perfectly frank with you, I like to do something on sound because it's probably the easiest thing out there that you can show to other people and yeah, it's something extra you can do that you can't do via eventing. So in eventing you can play sound and all that other crap, but you don't have as much fun functionality. Alright, let's just start our first sound here. You type in audio, capital A, dot, bgm, underscore, play. Alright, and this is a method, by the way. So, just like our methods up here, this is going to take arguments. And its first argument is going to be the file name. So, now we have to specify a path for it. I'm just going to go out here for a moment, open game folder. Alright. Bring that up. So, we're going to type in audio. Audio. And that's going to relate it to here. So, audio here, audio click into it. Great. Now do a slash. And by putting a slash in there, you're telling it to go into the audio folder. And now I want to go into the BGM folder. So, do BGM slash. And now, I want to type in the name of the audio file. So, in this case, I'm just going to put in battle one, as we've all heard before. Alright. Comma. So, for the second argument, and this one is volume, so I'm just going to have it normal, so 100. And now pitch. And I want this to be normal as well, so 100. So what's going to happen now is, it's going to get to here, and it's going to play the BGM. And then it's going to get to the message box of our previous tutorial, and it's going to hang there until we click on OK for the message box. And once we hit OK, it's going to do everything else, this, the... Uh, engine does and then it's going to go to the tile screen it's going to, it's going to replace cell BGM let's give it a shot and as you can see that was how that worked now you may have been wondering how did it play this file if it's not in the audio file here? Well, the answer is pretty simple to that. You actually have two audio folders here. You have your game audio folder, which is here. So this is your game folder, your main hub. And you have your engine folder, which would be in your program files, which on Windows XP would be this one, but on Windows 7, like I've got here, common files, Enterbrain, if you're using RPG Maker VX, it would be RGSS2. But since we're not, we're using VXA. VXAs, audio, BGM, and here's where I can find it. As you can see, Battle 1. And you don't have to specify the, uh, file, the file extension for this, by the way, so just Battle 1 on its own. So if I can't find it in the first folder, it will look here. And since it's here, great, we found it. Okay, now we'll just go back to. Uh, great. Now, how about we just don't play a BGM and let's play an SE instead. Or BGS. But yet, how about we just do all of them? We'll just copy this, do it again. And we'll make it a BGM. BGM. BGS play, and since it's a BGS, we'll go BGS folder, and I think it's fire. One of them is fire. Yep. I think it's fire. And we can have audio dot me underscore play again audio me um, victory one I think it is 100 100 and once again se se underscore play and again it's audio and SE and absorb one. 
Again, 100, 100. Oh, actually, BGS is known to playing in the 80s, so 80 for that one. 80 for that one. And I'll do 70 for that one. Uh, this is going to be a pretty messy one, I reckon. Well, that was uh, interesting. Anyway, so that's just the start of how to play some audio stuff. So I, I was thinking, if we go back to scripting, you don't actually have to have this in the audio folder. So as you've seen here, I've specified the path to it. But if I wanted to, you know, say hide my audio files in the data, I can do that. So if I just go up to here and go to black and white, yeah, I've got black and white. We'll get the title screen for Pokemon Black and White. How about that? And then we'll go to data. We'll place place it here. Okay. Now, nope, wrong script. That script and place the file name here. And you're in data now. So data slash. Yep, that should be good. Well, that worked exactly as intended, didn't it? Goody. Now we can get rid of all that. And I wanted to show some... Something you can only do via eventing with not scripting. Uh, sorry. You can only do via scripting with not eventing. And that is... Give me a sec. You are not restricted to 50 and 100 for the volume. Nor are you restricted to 150 and 50 for the pitch. In fact, your limits to the pitch while you're scripting is 5. So we'll just get that and let's play the let's play it now. Wow, that sounds like a horror ambience to me. It's amazing how that managed to turn into a horror area just by lowering the pitch a little bit. Uh, but anyway. So again, you're not limited to five you're not limited to fifty for pitch while you're scripting. Nor are limit nor are you limited to hundred and fifty. You can actually go two hundred. No higher than that though. Play it again. Now back to volume, back to volume, and all right, we'll just go with one for this, and back to 100 for you. Now you could probably just barely hear this one. Listen closely. All right. Now I think the highest volume is 150. Oh no, actually, I'm mistaken. When it comes to volume, it's still maximum 100. Okay, but your pitch is limited to a minimum of 5 and a highest highest amount of 200. So that's the good thing about scripting over eventing for audio. But, I need to make some, a quick mention here that you will not see this that often. So if you go into other people's scripts and they have what you might call audios and they play audio in their script quite often you won't see what I just showed you instead you will see this one hundred one hundred dot play and if we play it now and here's what's happening when you do this when you go RPG BGM dot new, instead of the normal method, I'll get rid of that now. Instead of the normal method of, you know, you have it comes here and you have to specify the path to the auto and the BGM. 
it does that on its own. So if I go RPG BGM dot new, it automatically goes into the audio and the BGM. And the only thing I have to specify for it is the file name. And that's not just for BGM either. I can do this the exact same for sound effects and BGSs and MEs and sound effects. Yep. So if I change these and this one will be a river. Shock. Uh, I think it's file one. That should work. And we'll change this battle two for now, so you know something else is happening. Great. Now this is a variable though, as you may have mentioned as you may have guessed. Well not really a variable, it's actually a class but I haven't gone into that yet so for now just think of it as if it's a variable. Alright so we can go bgm equals rpg bgm dot new and if we get rid of dot play now we can go bgs equals and these are local variables keep that in mind me equals and se equals and get rid of dot play nope I deleted something there I did Great. Now get rid of dot play for each of them. All right. And now you save these to the local variables. So now if I want to play the BGM and just the BGM, I can go BGM dot play. Beautiful. And that is doing audio in a nutshell. I'll go into these a bit further when we start doing more advanced stuff, but for now this is this is something you can easily do in a script call or just at the start of your game for any random odd effect. And yes, by using that method and uh, reducing this to pitch to 5, I want to see if this is a horror ambience too. Eh, not quite as much. Anyway, you get the gist of it, I suppose. <laughs>